Hi everyone. So in this lab, what I want to do is show a uh, pretty easy propagation system that you guys can set up if you're interested. So this is something that I saw on a, um, a webinar. This is from uh, a guy named Tom Del Hotel who uh, manages Fantasia Gardens in California. And this is the system that he uses. So uh, he described it for uh, hardwood cuttings, but this I believe would also work for softwood and semi-hardwood as well. So the system essentially consists of a plastic storage container. This one is a 12 gallon one that has these uh, kind of crimpy lids like that, which are helpful because you're gonna leave it propped open. And then all you really have to do is create a uh, little elevated base for it. So you can use that with some chicken wire that you cut out to the size of your base there, and then make a little frame with some scrap wood if you got it. And you, you're doing this because when we're actually going to do our cuttings, we're going to plant them in some plastic cups, and we want them to be elevated up off the bottom of this, as we'll talk about in a bit. So that's essentially the system. So how he does his uh, hardwood cuttings is he first takes them and uh, he wraps his cuttings in a damp paper towel. So you can see them there. These are just, uh, um, I'm not doing these for real. This is just for a demonstration, but if you had your cuttings, you would have them there. And he wraps them up in a damp paper towel. I think he leaves the ends a little bit exposed. So you wrap them up in a damp paper towel. Whoops, excuse me. Like so. You would then seal them. Let me put this down here. So you wrap them up. You then place them in a sealed plastic bag, like so. And you would put this in a warm place. And in a couple weeks, you should see the development of roots at the ends of your cuttings. Right? And it should look something like this. Now, once you get to that stage, you're ready to move on to actually plant these into your propagation system. So the next step would be is you need to get your cups ready into which you're going to put your cuttings and you need to fill them with some sort of media. So in the lecture, we talked about different media for propagation. This is going to be different than your regular potting mix. Um, so for here, I have just 100% vermiculite, but you can do vermiculite and perlite mix or a perlite and um, peat moss mix, anything sort of like that. You want something that's going to have hold a little bit of water, but not too much. Have uh, So have good drainage, have good aeration, and doesn't need to have uh, nutrients, right? In fact, you kind of want to avoid that initially. Uh, even sand, you'll see in the other one that I show you, it's just 100% uh, sand. So you have your vermiculite, you're going to take your rooted cutting, you would have a little hole that you make initially. If you, uh, you would then take your cutting, this would be, you would have your vermiculite nice and moistened, you'd stick your cutting in your cup like so. And again, you can buy cups. This is just a reused Taco Bell cup. Uh, so you want something about this size. He says around 26 uh, ounces. Anything around this should be good. You then take your cup and you put it, let's see if I can get that right. You put it in your box like so, right? And you can fit a whole bunch in there uh at any one time so you can do a number of cuttings and the idea is what's going to happen is as the water drips down through here and if you occasionally water that water is going to collect on the bottom and that's the reason that you had you built this little uh chicken wire thing right here it's because you don't want your your uh cuttings and your cups touching that water because it'll wick up and that'll be too much water and it could rot your cutting so you need a little elevated platform but that water that collects on the bottom is important because it's going to increase the humidity of this system. So when you're ready, you've got all your cuttings in there, you want to keep this slightly propped open, like so. 
right? And you're gonna put this in a uh, shaded environment or somewhere that gets kind of indirect light. You don't want too much uh, light on there. It's gonna create too much heat. There's gonna be too much evaporation. But by keeping this a little bit open, it allows for aeration. So that's gonna prevent some of your mold issues. And uh, the water in the bottom is gonna replace any water that's lost uh, through evaporation. So it's gonna keep it nice and humid. And this is now good to go. So you would let this sit for another couple of weeks. Once your, let's go back here. Once your cuttings have fully developed roots and you're gonna to start to see some top growth. Uh, you could then remove them from the cups, either slide them all out or you can even break your cups and you could then plant them into larger containers. Again, you're gonna to wanna to use, you're probably gonna to wanna to cut your potting mix. So not a full potting mix, maybe like 50-50 with potting mix and perlite. Uh, and then let them grow for a little bit longer and then you can up pot them later on to something that has more of your almost 100% potting mix. So that's that, uh, really easy, simple system. Like I said, he does this for hardwood cuttings, starting them with the damp paper towels. But if you have softwood or semi-hardwood, I think you could skip this step and go straight into cups into your system. So that's one uh, system that you guys can do. Another easy uh, system is just using a regular old plastic bin. Again, you gotta drill some uh, holes in the bottom for drainage, and I didn't mention that in the, in the cup here, but in the bottom of these, you have four holes drilled to allow for drainage. So you could have holes drilled in here, fill this with whatever media you are using. Again, your, your mix of vermiculite and perlite, or peat moss and perlite, or in the case that what I'm doing over here, you can use uh, just sand. So this is a little bit too fine grain. Ideally, you want to use a coarse sand, so not like the play sand that you would buy in a hardware store. But I'm kind of doing this just as an experiment, so uh, we're going to see how it goes. But sand works well. And then what you would do with your cuttings is exactly like I have here. You would, if you were going to use a rooting hormone, you would first dip them in the rooting hormone, have a little uh, kind of indentation already. This should be a little bit more wet and then stick your cutting right on in there. And you want to do that because uh, you want to make a pre kind of pre drill hole because as you're pushing the cutting in, you don't want that rooting hormone to kind of get like uh, removed as it gets, as your cutting gets pushed in. Um, but that's this system, really simple. Again, for hardwood cuttings, take them, dip them in the rooting hormone, put them in here. You want to make sure that this sand or your medium remains moist, right? Uh, and then put this in a shaded spot. And then in a couple weeks or months, ideally, these would develop roots and then a shoot system. Now, if we were going to adapt this for... Uh, softwood or semi-hardwood cuttings. Again, like these uh, hardwood cuttings are dormant wood, so it's going to take time for them to develop roots, but your softwoods uh, will develop roots much faster, and it's more important that because they are living tissue or actively growing tissue, that and they're actively transpiring, water loss is more of an issue, so you want much more of a humid environment for them. So if we we're going to adapt this, if we had some softwood cuttings, we could fill this in and then we would uh, cover this with a white plastic bag or a white plastic trash bag, right? And kind of almost seal it. And that's going to maintain humidity in this system here and we can uh, water it as needed. Um, but again, real simple way that you can propagate uh, plants through cuttings. The... Um, Last thing is, if we're talking uh, just outside, if you want to get fancier with outside beds, instead of, you know, having to use something like this, if you had an outside bed that is dedicated to cuttings, you could have that developed, um, have maybe your coarse sand in there. And if you want to get fancy with it, you can have a uh, automatic sprinkler system that you could set up or a misting system. There are... Um, uh, like tutorials online that can show you how to do that. Uh, and if you want to get real fancy with it, you could also have a soil moisture meter 
uh, involved as well that's going to measure your soil moisture to make sure you are watering or misting when appropriate. So that's it. Just wanted to show you a real simple uh, methods here for uh, propagation by cutting something you guys can do at home that is really easy and again this is just these are just two easy methods there are uh, lots of different ways that people do this if you do any sort of search online you will see a whole bunch of different methods but this is just something uh, for you guys to try if you're interested so that is it I hope you guys are doing well and I will see you in the next lab or lecture